Today, we're gonna have a look at one of my favorite lenses. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Peter and I'm primarily a nature photographer and lately I've been focusing more and more on macro photography. As I said before, the Canon 100-400mm Mark II has been one of my go-to lenses. I'm not really gonna talk in depth about the technical stuff. I'll mention a few specs here and there, but I'll be mainly focusing on sharing my own experiences with the lens and how I use it. And we'll also show you some shots I've taken so far. So let's dive in. The lens was released back in 2014, so it's seven years old, but it has aged quite well. It is completely better sealed and it also came with a very fancy pouch, which I've only used once in my life when I was traveling overseas. Otherwise it's been just gathering dust really. It has a variable aperture range from f4.5 to 5.6. It remains at its widest aperture at f4.5 up to 134 millimeters and then from 135 millimeters to 311 millimeters the aperture changes to f5 and then from 312 to the telephoto end of 400 millimeters it narrows down to f5.6. The lens itself weighs 1550 grams but with the tripod collar and the lens hood attached, it comes in at 1.7 kilos. There are nine aperture blades, which creates a beautiful bokeh, especially at the telephoto ends of 400 millimeters at wide open of f5.6. It uses a ring tab ultrasonic motor for quick and very accurate autofocus, but it also has manual focus override, which I haven't been using too much, as I usually trust the autofocus, it's extremely reliable. This motor is quite loud, especially if you have a microphone attached to the hot shoe, it picks up all that whirring sound that the motor makes, so you gotta be aware of that. I wish it had a nano ultrasonic motor, just like the EFS 18-135mm kit lens. It features internal focusing, so the lens doesn't extend. The focus limiter helps achieve faster autofocus when focusing on subjects that are further away than three meters. It comes with a 77mm filter thread, so you can attach all kinds of filters. I mainly have been using it with the circular polarizer from Nisi. The zoom ring is very easy to rotate, it turns very smoothly and it has a rotation of 100 degrees. It comes with an inbuilt optical image stabilization which provides four stops of optical IS but you can push it to even more if you have steady hands. I have managed to take tech sharp shots of birds at 400 millimeters even at 1 20th of a second. By lowering the shutter speed you can lower the ISO for significantly clearer images. It comes with three types of image stabilization. The first one compensates for both vertical and horizontal camera motion and it is very good for static subjects. The second one disregards the horizontal camera motion, so it can be handy when taking, for example, panning shots. This is an image I took of my cousin a few years ago on a motorbike. The third mode is similar to the first one, to the standard image stabilization, but it is only activated when you fully press the shutter button. This one is very useful, for example, in sports photography, when you have to quickly move between subjects. It is compatible with telephoto converters or extenders, both the 1.4X and the 2X. The 2X gives you an impressive 800 millimeter reach on the telephoto and on a full frame camera but with an APS-C sensor such as the Canon 80D, it would give you a whopping 1280 millimeters reach, which is very impressive. With the use of telephoto converters, the image quality suffers, degrades quite a bit though, so you have to be aware of that. The aperture range is narrowed down as well. So from f4, it is narrowed down to f6.3, and on the telephoto end to f8. The autofocus isn't gonna be as accurate either. It's only gonna use the face detect autofocus on certain cameras. As I mentioned before, it also comes with a tripod collar, which I've never really taken off. When mounting it on a tripod by the collar using an Arca Swiss plate, it's not stable enough. It wiggles around a little bit, even when screwed on as tight as possible. And that's a big no-no, especially when you are taking long exposures. That is why I've always mounted the camera body onto the tripod and it's much more stable that way. Another thing that I really like to talk about is the minimum focusing distance and the maximum magnification ratio. The lens can focus as close as 77 centimeters at the wide end and at the telephoto end of 400 millimeters, the minimum focusing distance is 98 centimeters, which is quite impressive, 
along with the maximum magnification ratio of 0.31x. The minimum focusing distance can further be reduced by using extension tubes. With that, you sacrifice focusing to infinity though, so just keep that in mind. With a 12mm extension tube, the magnification ratio jumps up to 0.38x, while with the 25mm extension tubes, it goes to almost half to one, 0.46x, which is very solid for a telephoto lens. Here you can see some test shots I took of a Rubik's cube. It was shot at f4, base ISO of 100, and the shutter speed was 0.3 seconds. The first shot was at 100 millimeters, and the second one was at 400 millimeters. Overall, I'm really happy with the lens. It is extremely well built, which you can expect from Canon's professional Air Series lineup. The weight is considerable, especially with the lens suit and the tripod color attached but it has never really been an issue for me. There's also some noticeable chromatic aberration and pincushion distortion, especially at the telephoto end of 400 millimeters, but these two can easily be corrected by enabling profile correction, for example, in Lightroom. The image quality is absolutely superb and comparable to that of the new mirrorless RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. The new RF lens is significantly more expensive. It costs almost twice as much at 5,000 Australian dollars, I believe. So if you don't have the budget, but you want to get a decent telephoto lens, I can highly recommend this lens. It would work perfectly via an EF adapter on the EOS R, the R5, R6, or even the upcoming R3. The autofocus is extremely responsive, very quick, and very accurate. It's an amazingly versatile lens, perfect for wildlife photography, obviously. But you can even take macro shots with it with the use of extension tubes or on a high resolution camera where you can crop in even more for maximum detail. It's also well suited for portrait photography. So that's all I wanted to share with you and hopefully you got something out of this review. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys very soon in the next one. Mm -hmm.